In this presentation, I'm going to very quickly talk about how data journalists get data for their stories. I'm going to go through four or five broad types of approach, um, and then we'll have a brief activity. So first of all, um, probably the best known way that data journalists get hold of data for stories is the leak, or data from a source that's known to the journalist personally. This is the um, background to some of the most famous data journalism stories, such as the Panama Papers um, and the MP's Expenses scandal, WikiLeaks. Stories like that are based on often large data sets that have been leaked somehow to the journalist, sometimes through a, a, a middleman like WikiLeaks, some sort of um, operator in the middle. Um, but that's actually quite rare. Perhaps the most common way that journalists get stories from data is through some sort of release, a data release, such as the data published regularly by um, governments and local authorities or statistical bodies, um, or it might be press releases like this example, which I am guessing is probably from a press release. This comes from a company which microchips cats um, and a kind of a byproduct of having that information on microchipped cats is that that organization knows where they are and it has information about breeds as well. So it's probably approached this news organization and said, look, we've got a story about which parts of the countries love cats the most. Another approach is to request data um, that might be through legal means such as the Freedom of Information Act and that's the case in this story. The uh, police authorities have been approached using the Freedom of Information Act and asked for information on how many victims or in rape cases have been asked to hand in their phones and how many have refused and what happened to those cases as a result. But you can also request data without actually using legal means. You might simply approach an organisation, particularly if it's not a public body, and ask them for data for a story. For example, uh, I've worked on stories in the past where we've spoken to property listing websites um, or Google, and they've been able to provide data to help us with their story. Another approach is to simply look for public data. Um, this approach is particularly relevant if you have a story which is based on some sort of idea or hunch or question. In this particular example, the HuffPost journalist Jasmine Gray wants to answer the question, what's the situation right now? What's a snapshot of the country when it comes to coronavirus? So she's gone out and found public data sources on the number of cases, on hospital bed occupancy, the number of tests, and put together a roundup of the situation. A similar sort of scenario is when you're reacting to a news story and looking for data to put that into context. So for example, there may be a couple of whale beachings or whale sightings. In that situation, you might decide, let's go and find the data to put that into context. How common is this occurrence? And that's what's happened in this story. Similarly, when a drone disrupted flights at Gatwick Airport, we went off and used a particular database to find out how common it was uh, to have a drone sighting and in fact, whether that was increasing as well. So those are the four or five broad categories of data stories and you'll notice that some of these are reactive, in other words you're reacting to the data and other approaches are more proactive. In those situations you're seeking the data based on some sort of idea. So if you're responding to data releases or press releases you don't necessarily know what the story is going to be, you just know you have some data to work with and you're going to look for a story in that. Likewise, when the Telegraph was given the data for the MP's expenses story, it didn't know what it was going to find in there and actually it spent a week, it put some reporters in a room to work with that data and try and identify how valuable that story might be in terms of potential stories. 
With data requests, you already have some sort of idea what the story is going to be. And the trick there is to make sure that your request for data, your FOI request or your email approach is specific and solid enough so that you're going to get the data that you need for that story. And we'll cover that later in the course. Likewise, if you have an idea for a story and you're seeking data that relates to that public data, then you're hoping that that data does exist and is public. In some cases, you might need to compile it yourself. That might be compiling it through surveys or through uh, uh, manually actually entering that data in some way. It might be that you compile it through um, a, an approach such as scraping. Scraping is where you use a tool or write a script to gather information from a number of online sources or documents. So for example, you might scrape job listings for nurses if you're interested in how many jobs there are in that particular sector. And the same applies to re reacting to news events. Um, in that situation, you're looking to see what data is publicly available and how quickly you can compile that story. So that's a, a very quick outline of where data stories can come from, the different types of approaches, reactive and proactive. A good technique to uh, expand your thinking around this is to start to look at stories and understand, reverse engineer them to understand where they got their data from, how they found the data and expanding your own data sources as a result. So a good exercise to do at this point is to pick five random stories from my bookmarks on Pinboard. Um, whenever I come across a data journalism story that I might want to um, look back at in the future, I bookmark that on Pinboard and I use the tag DJ for data journalism. Now I also use that tag for anything data journalism related so you'll find a lot of other material on there um, so you'll probably have to look around and um, ignore the pieces of research about data journalism or videos about data journalism. Find a couple of stories, find five random stories and look through that story to try to identify how they got the data. Sometimes it will be explicit, they'll say that they sent FOI requests or that they got the data from this particular organisation, they might even link to it. Sometimes you might have to imagine and guess. So have a look at those um, and discuss what you found on the Slack channel for this module.